Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, tonight's uh, stay at home lecture. I'm Tim Nutt, director of this UAMS Historical Research Center, and I'm glad to have you here tonight. The last uh, stay at home lecture for this year. Uh, if you've been to these lectures before, you know how, um, you know, you probably already know a little bit about the Historical Research Center, but in, in case you're new, we are uh, the only archives dedicated to the preservation of the health sciences in Arkansas. So not only do we have uh, records and, and uh, other documents documenting the history of UAMS, but also the health sciences, the medicine, the dentistry, uh, and other health professions uh, throughout Arkansas. We collect materials on that as well. Contact information is on the screen for the Historical Research Center. Um, I'd love to have her, have you come down, uh, give us a, for me to give you a tour at some point when COVID-19 is over. Hopefully <laughs> that'll be soon. And uh, also I'll tell you a little bit about the Society for the History of Medicine and the Health Professions, which is the sponsor of this lecture series. It is the Friends Organization of the Historical Research Center. And not only do they provide uh, support programming such as this, the stay at home lecture series, but also they help the Historical Research, Research Center purchase materials, books uh, for our History of Medicine collection. Uh, the Society also sponsors a yearly um, dinner. Uh, unfortunately, for the past two years, we've had to uh, cancel it because of COVID-19. We're hoping uh, we'll be able to have that next year. If you're not a member of the Society for the History of Medicine, I hope you'll consider joining. Dues run from January through December. They're inexpensive, $15 for an individual, $5 if you're a student, and you don't have to be a, just a student at UAMS. You can be um, a student at any Arkansas university or even outside of Arkansas, it, as long as you're interested in the history of medicine or just uh, want to support our society. The information, uh, the links to um, join the society are on your screen. The website, uh, you'll see the long URL there if you want to bypass that and just go directly to the um, uh, to pay to, to join, you can do that at the paypal.me slash shmhp. Um, we do plan on continuing these stay-at-home lectures um, as we enter into 2022 next year in January. And our first presentation of the new year will be by, by Rachel Silva Patton, Patton, excuse me. And she'll be talking about some historic medical properties in Arkansas properties, buildings, um, and um, mostly buildings, but ones that have some sort of medical uh, history attached to them or other health science history, um, such as the um, Army and Navy Hospital in Hot Springs. Uh, that would be just an example of one of the buildings that she might talk about. So I hope you'll join us on January 6th of next year. For that, the, the link that you use to join tonight's meeting is good for the January meeting and all future lectures after that. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about just a brief history of the UAMS College of Pharmacy. And it it's actually has a pretty uh, interesting history. Um, it, it's not as straightforward as you might think. Um, so. Um, Let's join, uh, let's get started and, and we'll sort of unravel, try to unravel this, this uh, convoluted history of the College of Pharmacy at UAMS. Now, before, of course, UAMS was established in 1879 as the medical department of Arkansas Industrial University, which was uh, University of Arkansas, what it was known as, known as at the time. The medical department was not an official entity of the university but um, it was a for-profit um, company, but the, the Arkansas Industrial University Board of Trustees allowed the uh, founders of the medical school to use the AIU and later U of A name um, when the medical department was established. 
But at that early stage, uh, it only focused on medicine. So it, pharmacy was not taught um, at the university, the medical department in the early part of the, of the school's history. It wasn't until uh, 1906 that the state got its first pharmacy school. Before that, um, much, much like the doctors, uh, pharmacists either came from out of state, they did education from other universities outside of the state and came into Arkansas, or they apprenticed with a, another um, uh, uh, pharmacist and then gained their knowledge that way. But in 1906, the College of Physicians and Surgeons, which was a competitor or a, a twin uh, medical uh, medical college to the university medical school. It was established in 1906. If you're familiar with Little Rock, um, the College of Physicians and Surgeons was located uh, as you're coming out of downtown Little Rock, you're on Cantrell, La Harp Boulevard. As you make that first curve uh, out of downtown Little Rock and you'll go over the little viaduct bridge uh, and you'll have the railroad of uh, the Bering Cross Bridge uh, right there. Just when you round that curve as you're heading west, that's where the College of Physicians and Surgeons uh, School was located. Uh, the Dillard's head headquarters is right near uh, where it was located. So in 1906, the College of Physicians and Surgeons was established. Um, the enrollment was never very high at the College of Physicians and Surgeons, but they did offer uh, uh, education in pharmacy. Uh, and it was the only school at the time uh, in the state that did offer uh, pharmacy education. So uh, 1906, and then in 1910, here's a photograph from 1910. There were six graduates from the College of Pharmacy in 1910. And um, let me get my notes here. It's interesting to note that they, there was never a large class of pharma, uh, pharmacy class at the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Uh, six in 1910, I believe, and let me see, in um, the previous year, there were uh, three uh, in 1909, um, and then I think in 1908, there were, um, I think there were even, I think there might have been about three uh, in that one as well. So as I mentioned, never a very uh, large pharmacy class, but it did offer the uh, it did offer folks the opportunity to gain their uh, formal pharmacy education um, uh, in state. Uh, finally, but this is a, an ad uh, for the College of Physicians and Surgeons. I don't I don't think I put the date on here, but it's 1909. Uh, paper uh, from the newspaper, and you can see uh, in their ad, they say the only college of pharmacy in Arkansas. So they were really touting that as a plus for the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Now, the College of Physicians and Surgeons did not have a long history on its own because it was established in 1906. In 1911, it was uh, shut down uh, mainly because of the uh, Abraham Flexner report on the uh, status of medical education in the United States. And in that, in his report that was commissioned, which was commissioned by the Carnegie Foundation, um, it noted that both the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the medical department of the University of Arkansas were lacking in both their facilities and their uh, teaching faculty, uh, and so in 1911, uh, the College of Physicians and Surgeons uh, actually merged with the medical department of UAM, of the University of Arkansas. So, um, and with that, the pharmacy school, uh, interestingly enough, I found this interesting, the pharmacy school did not transfer to the University of Arkansas when the two schools merged. Now the College of Medicine, um, when it merged with UAMS in 1911, 
uh, all of the previous graduates of the College of Physicians and Surgeons were automatically uh, declared alumni of the medical school at UAMS. But the College of Pharmacy did not transfer over to the university in 1911 when the two colleges uh, merged. Uh, they did, however, the, um, the College of Pharmacy, the, there was still pharmacy education in um, Little Rock and it still held the name had the name of the university, it was just not a formal part of the university system, similar to the way the College of Medicine was when it was first established in 1879. They allowed the pharmacy school to use its name, to use the university name, but it was not a formal part of the university. Now, when the two, when the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the medical department merged in 1911, the College of Medicine became a formal part, formal school of the University of Arkansas. Um, I, this is a, a photograph of the old state house when the medical school was in the state house um, from about 1912 until uh, 1924, 25, I believe. Um, and you can't probably can't read that sign, but on the sign that's hanging in between the columns, uh, of the old state house, it does say School of Pharmacy. So the pharmacy school did operate out of the old state house along with the College of Medicine uh, for a little bit. I, there is a, a note in um, one of the um, newspaper articles that talks about uh, in 1912 or 13, um, that the School of Pharmacy had to move out of the old state house and moved into the, um, um, to another building. I wasn't able to locate where that building is uh, or was. So it's just interesting. Um, so I'm still looking for that, but it's interesting to note that they started off in the old state house along with the College of Medicine and then they outgrew their, um, uh, the facilities and, and move to a larger building. So I'll be interested to find out what, where that other building was. Um, of course, uh, in 1912, they graduated uh, um, a class uh, from 1912. So the people who had started the College of Pharm in the College of Pharmacy at the College of Physicians and Surgeons, they were automatically accepted into uh, this other school the Little Rock School of Pharmacy, um, and then they, and those that were, were uh, it was a four-year um, plan when you were in the ph in pharmacy school, so in 1912, those that had already been uh, enrolled in the College of Pharma uh, Physicians and Surgeons graduated uh, from the Little Rock Pharmacy School, um, and you'll notice on this sign, it does say U of A Pharmacy Department, but again, it was not a formal uh, uh, division of the university. Um, so the U of A, the School of Pharmacy, operated uh, from about 1912 to about 1923-24. Uh, um, so, so far, if you're keeping track, so far we have two schools of pharmacy. We have the College of Physicians and Surgeons from about 1906 to 1911, and then we have the uh, U of A the slash Little Rock School of Pharmacy from 1912 to about 1924. In 1924, the U of A discontinues its pharmacy department. Um, I haven't been able to determine why they uh, discontinued that, but another college in Little Rock stepped up to offer pharmacy education for those who were interested. Um, here's another shot of 1922. Um, uh, School of Pharmacy, and you'll notice it says Little Rock School of Pharmacy. And another thing I want to note, uh, point out about this 1922 graduate uh, composite is the number of women that are in the pharmacy graduating class. So I counted uh, three, I believe. Here's one, uh, there's one on the top, and then one in the middle. And I think, I think there's three. Um, which I found fascinating that there were three women uh, in the graduating class of pharmacy school in 1922. Um, you know, by that, even in that early stage, there were very few female pharmacists 
in uh, Arkansas at the time. And the ones, uh, the first documented female licensed pharmacist in Arkansas was in 1891, Mary Cole from Fort Smith. Uh, she received her license in 1891. The second was uh, Maud Duncan Dunlap uh, from Winslow up in Washington County. Um, and she was the second one. And then um, one of the early ones was also uh, uh, went by um, Ida Davis, who was a pharmacist up in Houston in Perry County. And so to me, it's really fascinating that there are three women in the graduating class of the School of Pharmacy in 1922. And actually in 1923, one of those women, 1920, uh, in 1923, one of the women who, who graduated was a Mrs. Bates from Washington down in Hempstead County. And there was an article uh, written about her. I don't have a photograph of her, unfortunately, but um, the article says, to Washington comes the distinction of having the only registered lady pharmacist in Hempstead or adjo adjoining counties in the person of Mrs. M.S. Bates, wife of the local Rexall store proprietor. Mrs. Bates has just completed a course in the Little Rock School of Pharmacy and received her membership card in the Arkansas Pharmaceutical Association this week, having successfully passed the rigid examination of the school. This gives Bates's drug company two registered pharmacists, Mr. Bates having graduated in pharmacy a number of years ago. So again, Washington, a small town in Hempstead County, having one of the few female pharmacists in the state. So they had a graduating class in 1923. In 1924, the School of Pharmacy was discontinued um, by the U of A, but Little Rock College, uh, stepped up to offer pharmacy education uh, to those in, in interested. Little Rock College was formed, was established by the Catholic Diocese of Little Rock in 1908. It originally started, um, it was a liberal arts college. It was originally downtown uh, at 25th and Gaines Street in a building there. And then in 1911, the diocese also started a seminary school which also uh, operated out of the 25th and Gaines building. In 1916, the diocese uh, established the campus of Little Rock College uh, in Pulaski Heights. It's at the end of Tyler Street, if you're familiar with Little Rock. And you'll see on your screen Morris Hall, which was the first building built uh, by Little Rock College. And you can see the, one of the seals uh, from Little Rock College that is still on the building there. So Little Rock College in 1924 started op, uh, offering pharmacy education uh, as part of its curriculum. It operated, uh, again, it was very short-lived. It operated until 1928. And, um, and it just became, or excuse me, 1927. So it only operated three or four years uh, before it was discontinued just because of lack of, 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 uh, of interest and Little Rock College, uh, the diocese focused more, started focusing more on the seminary, um, St. John's Seminary aspect of, uh, the, of its education. And so Little Rock College uh, was uh, shut down. And, but the buildings still remain, all the buildings are uh, still up in the St. John's and Pulaski Heights. And interestingly, Little Rock College when uh, Little Rock University was started in the 1950s, I believe, it, be, it was Little Rock Junior College, and then they wanted to go to Little Rock University. Um, the diocese held the name Little Rock University, and so the diocese actually signed over the name to uh, the folks that started Little Rock University, which eventually became part of the UFA system at U University of Arkansas at Little Rock. So that's just a little interesting tidbit about the educational uh, institutions here in Central Arkansas. So Little Rock College, 1924, 1927. So within a span of uh, what we have, uh, uh, 21 years, uh, we have three schools of pharmacy so far. So it goes defunct in 1927 and there is no 
pharmacy education in Arkansas from 1927 until 1946. So, so there was just nothing. If, if folks during that time wanted to become a pharmacist, um, they had to go out of state to do that. But in 1946, um, in the early 1940s, I'll let me mention Jonesboro Baptist College, also Jonesboro Junior College, uh, as it's named. It also offered some pharmacy classes, but nothing that stuck for any length of time. But there were some classes offered in Northeast Arkansas at Jonesboro Junior College. But in 1946, the College of the Ozarks, now the University of the Ozarks in Clarksville, started their School of Pharmacy. The pharmacy uh, school was operated out of Voorhees Hall on the um, College of the Ozarks campus. And in 1946, they established that they had a pretty good um, admission uh, to uh, the School of Pharmacy at College of the Ozarks. There were about 20, 25 students every year going through that in its short uh, history. In 1949, the state legislature uh, appropriated $100,000 a year to support the School of Pharmacy uh, at Co College of the Ozarks. Unfortunately, that did not last very long because as soon as that was passed in the 1949 uh, General Assembly, Assembly session, it was uh, uh, a Little Rock citizen, Little Rock resident filed a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of the state providing state funds to a religious institution. Of course, College of the Ozarks is, um, I believe, Presbyterian and um, it, uh, the lawsuits claimed that uh, for separation of church and state, you could not, the state could not provide uh, taxpayers money to a um, religious institution. Even though it was for a school of pharmacy, they did not require a person to be of any sort, any uh, religion to be admitted to the school of pharmacy. They did not require them to perform any uh, in and engage in any of religious activities at the school. But nonetheless, the uh, Arkansas Supreme Court upheld that, um, that lawsuit and the appropriation was uh, stripped from the College of the Ozarks. That happened in uh, 1949. So after the 1949 class, the College of the Ozarks uh, discontinued its school of pharmacy. Again, that would leave a big void in, in the uh, pharmacy, pharmacy education in Arkansas. But this time the U of A stepped up again. And um, in 1951, the University of Arkansas established the school of pharmacy uh, as a formal division of the University of Arkansas. So 1949, pharmacy school aid and debt. Um, so 1951, the University of Arkansas established the School of Pharmacy. The first home of the School of Pharmacy was uh, at 16th and Lewis Street. So at this time, uh, the school, the medical school was located in downtown Little Rock at, um, uh, on McAlmont Street, 16th and McAlmont, I believe. And, uh, but they're, uh, they were already bursting at the seams. So there was no room for pharmacy students to, to be incorporated into the, into the old medical school uh, downtown. And in fact, it was at this time where the university officials were in, in, in talks with Governor Sid McMath about building a new medical center and, <clears throat> that would eventually happen. The, the legislature passed a cigarette tax uh, to help uh, fund the building project. And of course, that's UAMS where it is now, uh, what was then considered West Little Rock uh, on the grounds of the Arkansas State Hospital. State Hospital, um, uh, they took some of the grounds from the state hospital to build 
UAMS. And so, but until 1957, the School of Pharmacy operated out of this building at 16th and Lewis Streets. And interestingly, this building after in 1957, after the School of Pharmacy vacated it to move to the UAMS campus, this became um, uh, the home of the Rainey School, I believe, one of the schools that were started um, uh, during the, uh, the integration of Central High School. This was one of those alternate high schools that were set up um, to uh, avert uh, school desegregation. But in 1957, um, they did move to campus and uh, 1952, let me back up a little bit, 1952, they graduated their first class and uh, this is a graduating class in the, in the faculty of the School of Pharmacy, the U of A School of Pharmacy. Uh, and all the people, the people who had already been admitted into the College of the Ozarks School of Pharmacy, they were grandfathered in to the, to the uh, U of A School of Pharmacy. One of the things that did occur, one major thing is they took uh, a four-year pharmacy uh, curriculum and they expanded it to five years. Uh, the first three years, the uh, courses were, it, they were split between Little Rock and Fayetteville, first three years in Fayetteville, and then the last two years were at the School of Pharmacy in Little Rock at the Med Center. So in 1957, as I mentioned, uh, they moved to campus. At this time, the hospital had already been built. The hospital was completed in 1956, I believe, and on this, and then soon after the hospital was completed, they started working on what is Education Building One. Now it's known as the Shorey Building, and you'll see you see it on the right uh, as it's being constructed um, in this photograph. So that wing of the of the campus housed all the educational uh, classes of the university. Uh, they were located on the third floor of the Shorey Building in in the nineteen 70s, they were moved over into uh, Education Building 2, which was just to the south of Shorey Building, and now they occupy uh, Education Building 2 and the Ron Building, Education Building 3. Um, now, the first thing that they had to do, um, uh, of course, they hired a new dean and I don't know what happened to my photo of the first dean, but um, the, the first dean was uh, Stanley Middlestadt, and he came to, he was hired from Texas. He was a native of Washington. He was teaching in Texas, and he was hired as the first uh, assistant dean or the professor of pharmacy for the school in 1951. And he was the one that was instrumental in changing the program from a four-year program to a five-year program. And he was, uh, he remained dean of the School of Pharmacy until 1976, when at that time he was, uh, he was forced to retire. Uh, the U of A system at that time had a policy, or the UA, uh, I should say, not UA system. University of Arkansas had a policy in place that when someone turned a faculty member turned 67, they were automatically retired. Um, so he retired, he was retired in 1976. Larry Milney uh, came in as dean. He had been on the faculty at the College of Pharmacy. And so he became dean in 1976. He stayed until 2003. And when he was promoted to uh, vice chancellor, uh, Milne had come originally from the University of South Carolina before he came on the faculty uh, at U of A, uh, and he eventually he became vice chancellor for academic affairs and research administration. He stayed in that position until 2011, and then he retired from the U of A, and then uh, Dr. Stephanie Gardner uh, became dean of the College of Pharmacy. She was the first uh, female dean of the college. 
and uh, the first female in the long line of, of deans uh, for the College of Female Deans for the College of Pharmacy. She stayed in that position until 2015 when she was uh, uh, promoted to um, uh, provost of, U of UAMS of Academic Affairs. And in, in her interim, after when she was uh, promoted to provost, Shwanda Flowers became the interim dean of the, of the College of Pharmacy until the next dean started in 2015, Dr. Keith Olson, uh, and he stayed for four years. He left, he went to Nebraska, and uh, Dr. Kat Neal, uh, became uh, interim pro, interim cha um, interim dean, excuse me, for the College of Pharmacy until they hired the current uh, dean, Dr. Cindy Sn uh, Stowe, who is uh, she came in 2019 and is still dean uh, currently. Now, in throughout the years, there have been a number of high-profile uh, faculty members in the College of Pharmacy. Uh, for historians out there, you may be familiar with the name uh, Bill Gurley. Uh, he is a Civil War historian and, talk, and does a lot of, has written a number of books on um, the Civil War in Arkansas. And, and he's currently working on a book about a, a doctor who uh, operated and kept a diary on his cases uh, during the Red River campaign in, Cam in Camden during the Civil War. Another interesting person, and I want to end with Dr. Kim Light. Uh, he was just an, he was a great faculty member. People loved him in the College of Pharmacy, but he uh, started this programming program in the late '80s, early '90s, where um, it was a uh, to prevent drug abuse uh, and to teach uh, 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 children about the dangers of drug abuse. And so he came up with this creation called RF Ant. Uh, and it was RF stood for refuse. And so it was to refuse drugs. And so, and he, there was this whole campaign built around RF Ant. Uh, in the Historical Research Center, we have uh, the costume, the, the ant head. RF ant head, which you see me wearing there, and also the size, I think there were size 15 shoes that went with it. Um, so he had this whole program built around RF ant. There was a whole family. There was a uh, stem you ant and depress ant, um, all about the dangers of drug abuse. And so um, that's really a, a fascinating piece of UAMS history is about RF Ant and everything that uh, goes along with that. So, and that is, I think that's the last one uh, for the slide for this. It's kind of a, just a brief, brief history of the, the School of Pharmacy. I know there's a lot of stuff I didn't touch on, but I will open it up to questions. If anyone has any questions, uh, you can use the chat feature or, um, we can turn on the uh, the video too, if you wanna do that as well, since we don't have a whole lot of people here. But thank you all for being here tonight. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, um, uh, uh, to ask or chat or however you might wanna do it. I'm going to stop the share here and if there are any questions, please let me know. The, the College of Pharmacy is just, it does so many uh, wonderful things for the university. Of course, it, it handles the, the, the poison hotline and uh, just all sorts of things, uh, important work it does, uh, ju not just for the university, but also for Arkansas in general. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free uh, to type type it in or uh, if you if you can unmute yourself uh, please please feel free to do that and ask the question verbally Tim yeah can you hear me this is Sam I can hear you okay what about the African American organization of physicians? pharmacists and dental people 
at, in the late 19th century, did they ever have any impact on, on pharmaceutical education in Arkansas? I did not discover any connection between the AMDPA and uh, uh, in the, any of the schools of pharmacy, um, which I'm, I'm surprised that I haven't. And I, I think there's probably something there, but I just have not found anything. And uh, Sam is talking about the, I'm trying to get, let me see if I get the Arkansas, let's see, it's the, it's doctors, uh, physicians and dentists. dentists it? Yeah, yeah. And it's the African American uh, organization for those three professions here in Arkansas. That was established in 1895 because uh, African Americans were not uh, in, uh, admitted to the Arkansas Medical Society or the various Arkansas Pharma Pharmaceutical Association and other organizations like, like that. So they established, African Americans in Arkansas established their own organization and it still continues to this day. Um, and so a lot of them have dual memberships in both the Arkansas Medical Association and the AMDPA. But I, I, didn't, I haven't been able to discover any any sort of connection between that organization and uh, pharmacy education. All right, can you hear me now? Am I still on? Yeah, I can still hear you. Okay. Uh, the, the other question I had was, there was clearly, or even though it was denied by the University of Arkansas Medical Center, there was, there was clearly a quote, quota on women in medical school, okay? Was there ever a quota earlier on pharmacy students, female pharmacy students that you're aware of? I am not aware of that. I wouldn't be surprised if there was. Um, and uh, um, of course, the university, the College of Medicine, they got their first female, had their first female graduate in 1901. So 21 years after it was founded. Uh, it got it, it had its first female graduate. And there was a, initially the College of Medicine did not allow uh, any uh, females or did not admit any females uh, to the school. So I imagine that the, now I do know that, um, of course we saw the women in the, in the Little Rock School of Pharmacy and there were three of them in the 1922 graduating class. And I know that there were women in the, in the classes at Little Rock College, uh, not very many, uh, but I don't know if there were actual formal or uh, un informal uh, quotas on females uh, admitted. Are there any records about how many of these women who trained, or excuse me, how many of the pharmacists who trained in Arkansas in that first early period stayed in Arkansas? I think I, I don't have uh, records to back it up, but just from the research that I've done, I think most of them stayed in Arkansas. Most, if not all of them, stayed in Arkansas. Okay. Um, and most of them went to these small towns, um, uh, uh, not exclusively, of course. I mean, there were some that obviously practiced in the Little Rock as well in the larger towns, but... Um, but uh, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of them stayed in Arkansas. I don't think that we had a, there was a huge amount of out of state people who came in and or native Arkansans who got their degrees and then left the state. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent summary. I like that. Was very good. Thank you. Anyone else have a have a question? Okay, if not, I'll, I'll sign off for tonight. And thank you all for joining me. And I hope uh, to see you in January. Uh, let, I'll type my email in the, um, in the chat box. And so if you have any questions or uh, you want to be added to the email list, we do send out emails regarding uh, this, these lectures. And so if you're not on the list and you'd like to be, just send me an email and I'll, I'll be happy to add you to the list. But thank you all for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Stay safe. Happy holidays. And we'll see you in the new year.